Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash I don't work here lady, where you know the deal. Karen's mistake regular customers as employees. And in this episode, Opie gets harassed and attacked by a store manager, guys, who thinks Opie is a freaking employee. Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories today. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So I used to work at a Sonic in a very small southern town. I worked there for about three years and was manager for a year before leaving. Last time I worked there, it was 2015. That's pretty important to remember. Since it's a small town, I usually just walk anywhere I need to go. And this particular day last week, I decided to walk to the store to get ice cream. So I popped my headphones and hoodie on and start walking. I get to the street where the store is, and right before I get to the door, I hear someone calling out over my music. They weren't calling my name, just a general, hey, to get my attention. So I turn to see if the shout is directed at me, and sure enough, here comes Karen sprinting down the street at me. Now unfortunately, I do know this woman. The woman owns the laundromat connected to the store, and her husband is town mayor. She's quite a bit older than me, and I only know her because of her husband. I call her Miss Mare in my head, because she acts like she was the one voted in sometimes. This is the conversation that follows. Miss Mare comes up to me and says, Oh good, I caught you. I have a question for you. I say to her, uh, sure, what do you need? It's at this point, Miss Mare stands up straight and leans into me really close, getting up in my face, and she says, Why can't I get my goddamn milkshake on time? The woman is screaming in my face, and I take a big step back because I'm not comfortable with physical contact and being screamed down at. I say to her, first of all, back up. Second, never scream in my face again. And third, what are you even talking about? Hearing me ask that, Miss Mayor starts huffing and puffing, in either indignation or she's out of breath from literally running me down. She says to me, the Sonic. I'll have you know that I waited 10 minutes for my milkshake the other day. Hearing that, I'm clearly annoyed. I say to her, Lady, I haven't worked at Sonic for like 10 years. If you have a complaint, take it up with the store. Don't bother me when I'm out. And at that, I think it's the end, but I'm stupid. I turn to leave, and then I hear this loud scream sigh behind me. She says to me, I'm not done yet. Your employees gave me the worst service, and I demand an explanation. I say to her, I don't work there. At this point, our screaming match is of course drawing the attention of the local busybodies, and one person in particular. The mayor himself steps out on his porch, and he yells, Honey, what are you doing? And as soon as he sees me, he gets this look on his face that's about a million times just done, and he goes, Damn it, woman. I told you that girl don't work there no more. In all the deep southern drawl glory you can imagine. Miss Mayor then starts hemming and hawing and then goes inside. The mayor tells me that she had some bad service at the Sonic I used to work at and for some reason was blaming me all night to him. He told her multiple times I don't work there, but she couldn't get it through her head. I'm almost entirely sure that there was more behind this than just bad food service, like small town politics, and people here will jump on your ass for every little thing, even if your cousin's girlfriend's brother did it. Somehow, it affects the entire family. So I wonder, who in my immediate or non-immediate family pissed in her Cheerios that day? Yeah, so that's the one thing about being from a small town, guys. Everyone knows everyone, and everyone knows everyone's business. But imagine that, though. Like, how crappy of a person do you have to be to get that seriously upset over poor fast food service and then complain about it all night? I'm willing to bet that that Karen thought she was hot stuff being the mayor's wife and all, and she quickly found out that Sonic employees don't play that game. Like, she probably got mad that she had to wait like everyone else. Alright, so I used to read these stories and think there's no way this could possibly ever happen to me. But last week, it did. I was at the supermarket and my purse happened to collide with a precariously stacked tower of apples, sending them all scattering. I just picked them up and went on my way. I was finishing up in produce when a woman corners me. For context, I'm a senior woman, and I was in a dress pushing a cart full of groceries. Karen screams at me, Hey, you. I ask her, Yes, what do you need? Karen says, Where's the free fruit? At that, I reply, Uh, uh, no clue, I'm sorry. 
She then sarcastically says to me, Well, would you go find it, please, and let me know where it is? That's when I say to her, I don't work here. And Karen says, I just saw you stacking a display. I don't care if this isn't your department. My kid is hungry. So where is the free fruit? Again, I tell her, oh, oh, sorry, I don't work here. Anyone in a green or black apron can probably help you. At that, Karen says, no, I don't have time to wander around. You help me. At this point, I try again, slowly this time. I say to her, I do not work here. Good luck. That's when her kid chimes in and says, you're stupid. You don't even know where the fruit is. Now, if I had more presence of mind, I would have said, well, neither do you. But this kid was like seven and I had to be an adult. I say to her, look, I can't help you. I then turn to leave and that's when Karen says, what's your name? I'm reporting you to the manager. And this is where it gets interesting. So I'm going to check out, and I see Karen and her son in the next line over. Her son's eating this apple, and the cashier, I guess, has asked them to pay for it because Karen's yelling how it was supposed to be free. And she was yelling loud enough that other employees and a security officer starts to come over. The cashier says, I'm sorry if there's some kind of miscommunication, but we don't have a free fruit program. Karen then says that one of the store employees told her it was free and was very rude to her. Now, I don't love confrontation, so I'm trying to avoid her line of sight. No luck. The woman spots me and she starts screaming, right there, that one. That one right there told me it was free and she wouldn't help me. I'm just looking around, pretending like I'm trying to see who she's talking about. And Karen says, you, do not ignore me. I'm a customer. I say to her, excuse me, are you talking to me? I don't work here, I'm sorry. Karen screams, she's lying. I saw her working here, she was picking up apples. And this is when the cashier tells her, ma'am, she doesn't work here. You're gonna have to pay for that apple, or I'm afraid I'll have to escalate the matter. The woman just yelling, and I didn't buy much, so I just paid and got out of there as soon as possible. I hope she was banned, that crazy lady. Yeah, I have no idea where this Karen got the idea of free fruit from. Like, I have never been to a grocery store where they've had a free fruit program. Like, a free cookie from the bakery I've heard of, but not free fruit. I'm just thinking her son really wanted an apple, guys, and Karen, not wanting to pay for an apple, just made up some BS and tried to pin it on an employee. Because that's what Karens do. So here's some backstory. I've been working at Walmart for six years, and this entitled dude comes in to shop at least twice every week. So we spot each other all the time, but we never actually have spoken before this point. With that said, yesterday I was off work. So I went to Walmart to do some grocery shopping. And sure, it does suck to be there when I'm not working, but I do get an employee discount. Anyways, as I'm shopping, it's not uncommon for people who shop there regularly to recognize me as an associate. However, they usually leave me alone because I'm clearly not working, as I'm not wearing my vest or Walmart hat. This time though, the entitled dude spots me shopping. He was in front of the toy department with his daughter. I think she's around 6 or 7 when he saw me shopping. Now it should be easy to see that I'm not working. As said, I'm wearing no vest or hat with Walmart Spark. I was also pushing a cart of food and small household needs. So the entitled dude makes his way over to me and just stops directly in front of my cart to keep me from moving forward. He then says, hey, I'm gonna need you to help me get a bike down from the rack. I just reply, I'm sorry, but I'm actually not working right now. I'm sure there's another associate around here who can help you. The dude says, but you work here. You have to help. It's your job. And that's when I tell him, as I said, I'm not working right now. I'm here to shop. The dude then says, well, you shouldn't be here if you're not working. You're here, so do your job. So yeah, I'm getting annoyed, and I try to turn my car to get around the entitled dude. And even though I wasn't on the clock, I didn't want to say anything that could get me in trouble because I was still inside my workplace. The dude then says, I need you to get a bike for my daughter. Are you seriously trying to walk off and not help us? What kind of customer service is this? I say to him, listen, I'm not allowed to help you when I'm not on the clock. That's when the dude tells me, just go and clock in and help me. How hard is it? It'll only take a few minutes. I tell him I can't do that. He asked me, why not? 
I tell him I would need a manager to override, I just can't clock in whenever I want. But as I've said, there's other associates here who can help you. At this point, the Entitled Dude's daughter was getting upset that no one was getting a bike down for her. The Entitled Dude gets frustrated, as was I. He then glares at me and he grabs his daughter's hand and he says, Well, I'm going to speak to your manager right now. And I can guarantee you that you won't have a job after today. You can't treat customers like this. I tell him, I'm a customer right now too, man, but okay. At that, he storms off with his daughter to find a manager, and I finish my shopping. Today at work, my manager brings it up and said not to worry about it. That some customers just don't understand the fact that employees aren't always working. We don't help you out of the kindness of our hearts. We help you because we're getting paid to do it. I would love to find this entitled dude's workplace and demand for him to help me on his day off. Oh, wouldn't that be something. And guys, I only wish OP told the guy, sure, I'll be right back. I'll go clock in and come help you right away. And just never return. But seriously, how entitled, right? Oh, what? You're not allowed to work while off the clock? Well, just clock in then. My daughter needs this bike right now. Some freaking people, I tell you, never cease to amaze me. This happened over a decade ago. It's a lovely tale of how I went shopping and managed to get fired. Let's give you some context to help you out though. So my brother and I are half Chinese. We're three years apart. I'm 5 foot 11 and he's just under 6 foot 2. We have different fathers so it's always weird to hear, wow, you guys look the same, when we really don't. So I have a day off and I'm going to meet my friends. I've got like 20 minutes to kill, and I'm mulling over whether or not I want to grab a new graphics card for my computer. My brother gets a discount where he works, so I stop by. So I go into the shop, and I'm staring at graphics cards, comparing one to another. I'm standing there for a good 5 minutes before someone comes up to me and just stares at me. I ask, what's up? As it's obvious they want my attention. I notice that she's got a name tag, and like me, she's wearing a plain black t-shirt. However, she doesn't have a problem with my t-shirt. She says to me, why are you wearing jeans? Obviously, I'm bewildered, but she just goes on and says, you know what the policy is here. Why are you wearing jeans? I just can't help but laugh. In the moment, I figure she's having a laugh with me and that it's an interesting way to try to close a sale. An electronic shop with a dress code. Hilarious. However, this isn't the desired response as the mood flips completely. The girl is shaking. She's shaking with rage at the fact that I'm just giggling in her face. She then screams at me and says, Get into the office right now. She then tries to lead me by the arm like I'm a school child. And she was even more enraged by the fact that I withdrew my hand from her. Disregarding my confused expression and comment of, What the F? The girl runs off, and in under a minute, she's brought back a heavy set guy who looks pretty unhappy with the fact that he's been brought out. Unlike everyone else, who I notice is wearing a black t-shirt and black trousers, this guy's in casual clothes. He's the boss. The guy's now getting increasingly unhappy as she fills in the encounter with stories of my incompetence and of the recent struggle she's had with me. So I cut in, and I argue how this is a misunderstanding, and I get told to zip it. And yes, that expression was genuinely used. He told me to zip it. I was then berated while I tried to cut in to explain the situation. I'm also now running out of time, so I try to call my brother, so he can get down here and sort this all out. However, Big Boss Man then has the nerve to take my phone away from me. He then scolds me about having my phone on the sales floor. He also tries to grab me to take me to the back office, as we've got a crowd growing, but I shrug them off. At this point, I'm swearing, he's swearing, and then it comes. He says that I'm fired. I tell him, I don't work here. I'm not who you think I am. He says to me, you're not him, BS. He then grabs me, picks me up, and starts dragging me to the front door. Meanwhile, I'm flailing around, trying to stay on my feet, kicking boxes and shelves. We finally get to the door, to which I'm pushed out of. He then stands there blocking the doorway, aghast with how I acted, stating how appalled he is. That's when my phone starts ringing and I see it's my brother. I answer and immediately tell him to run back to work. He's on his lunch break, two minutes away, and that's when I decide to take it further. 
I tell his boss to get F. I swear, I start making a scene, a really loud scene. We're on the streets, and people are stopping to watch the theater unfold before them. At this point, boss man's calling the police, and there's vile things being said and gestured, and that's when my brother turns up. The look on his face is golden, but what I'm enjoying much more of is the look on his boss's face, and the look of his supervisor's face. They both went pale after realizing their mistake. And this is when I pulled the race card. Well, as well as a half Chinese guy can anyways. And you wouldn't be able to imagine the amount of apologies I was getting from both of them. They were trying to bring us both back inside. I went inside to listen to the apologies, and in the end, I got a free graphics card that day for not escalating things. Holy moly. All I can say is if I were in OP shoes, I would have said no to that free graphics card and opted to have that big boss man fired instead. And I'm being dead serious, like grabbing people who he thinks are employees, dragging them against their will, stealing their phones, attempting to kidnap them. Like, again, if that were me, forget about the free graphics card to make everything better. I'm calling the cops on these two. Especially if it's a big box store where there's cameras. And guys, you know I read a lot of these stories, and every single time I read about a person in a position of power doing stuff like this to their employees and not getting fired, I'm just baffled. So yeah, let me know if you would go scorched earth on this guy too. So I thought I'd share a little story with you that happened to me in 2013. At the time, my then-girlfriend was about to move into my apartment. I was between jobs, and I figured I could do some touch-ups and home improvement. I installed a lamp she wanted to hang, did some other small things like painting, etc. I got home from the local hardware store and I parked my car, which is a black Volkswagen, no company logo or anything else on the car, and begin to unload the stuff I bought. Two parking spaces away, I noticed a lady unloading moving boxes from her car. She stopped in the middle of what she was doing, glaring at me in anticipation. Now I have no idea what she wants, but I figured I'll be nice to a new neighbor and I said hello with a smile. Well, I moved my stuff to the elevator. I then unlock my apartment and get to work. 20 minutes later, someone rings my door and it's the lady, who we'll refer to as Karen, from the parking lot. She stands in the hallway with a look on her face, like she just gargled lemon juice. I say to her, hello. Karen says, well, first of all, you have to move your car. I need the space to move in. We have several cars coming and you can't park there, even during working hours. Secondly, you can do this later. You need to install my internet access right now. I don't have time to wait the entire day. And what you're doing can clearly be done later. Hearing that, I'm completely dumbfounded by the situation. I just stood there for like 10 seconds trying to process what she said. I say to her, uh, you're probably confusing me with someone. I have no idea what. She then interrupts me and says, young man, don't you take me for an idiot. Get down to my apartment right now and set up the internet. The kids are cranky enough from the move, and you can return later to do whatever it is you're doing. Still trying to process what the heck is going on, I say, uh, ma'am, I'm pretty certain that there's a mistake here. I... Karen chimes in again and says, you need to do what I say, or I'll make sure you regret this. I'm going to inform your boss what an unwilling and unfriendly employee you are. I will have you fired if you don't install my internet access right away. I reply, ma'am, listen to me. I'm sure you're mistaking me for someone else. I can call building management and maybe they can figure it out for you. Do you want me to call them? I have their number saved on my phone. Karen says, you can call them right away. This is unacceptable. So I pull up the number for the building management, call it, and then hand her the phone. After a few rings, Karen says, yes, this is Mrs. Karen. Yes, this is absolutely unacceptable. This young man, who's supposed to install our internet access, refuses to do his job, and instead, he's loitering around in this empty apartment. This is unacceptable. I demand that his company is informed, and I'm not going to pay a single cent for a service like this. She then keeps talking and says, My apartment number is 1234. I can then hear some talking over the phone. And then she says, What's your name, young man? I give her my name, and I can hear more talking on the phone. After like 20 seconds, I can see Karen's head turning redder than a stop sign. She mumbles something incoherent, hangs up the phone, and stomps away without any eye contact. Still absolutely overwhelmed with what happened, my phone then rings. I answer and say, hello? 
It's the building manager, and he says, Hi, this is Jeff from building management. We're very sorry, there was a confusion. She apparently thought you were the ISP technician. We informed her that you're a resident and apologize for any possible confusion. I say to him, yeah, I tried to tell her that. No worries, nothing happened. That's a weird situation, I guess. I went down there to move my car to guest parking for her, and I had a few giggles as Karen was desperately trying to avoid eye contact with me, and she did a stunning job at pretending I wasn't there. To this very day, over five years later, Karen has not once made eye contact with me or greeted me. I made a somewhat petty tradition out of this by greeting her in a comically nice way every single time I meet her in the parking garage. And what makes it a million times better is when her husband's with her, who always greets back with a little smirk on his face. The guy knows. He definitely knows. And I definitely love how the husband knows that his wife royally effed up guys, and that she's playing awkward turtle the rest of her life. But seriously, nothing wrong with a simple apology, ma'am. Just apologize and move on. You don't have to hide the rest of your life. So some years ago, I worked at a place that rhymes with McNaldo's. You know, the place that sells heart attacks as food and advertises it with an ugly clown. Anyways, I worked there for six grueling years. In those six years, I've got hundreds of stories, but this one stays with me since it was the first one to happen right after I quit. First off, my reason for quitting was that they wouldn't accommodate my one simple request, to leave through an alternate exit due to my abusive ex waiting for me in their lobby every day. Every day I came to work, he would come in, order something, and then sit for hours staring and glaring at me until my shift would end. He would then follow me outside the door and try to harass me while I would get into an Uber, only then to show up at my apartment to keep threatening me or to break windows. I begged them for a solid month to let me leave through another door to get a head start to my ride, and every single time, I would get some BS answer telling me that I was overreacting. I basically got sick of constantly wondering what day would be the day that he would come in there with a gun, and I told my supervisor that if she wouldn't let me leave through an alternate exit, then I would quit. She then laughed in my face. Let's call her Mary. About a week later, I called, and I left a nice resignation letter to the big boss, who totally understood. And after dealing with unemployment, I get this phone call. Mary's the supervisor. She calls me and says, So, when are you coming in? Because you've been gone about a week, and we're short-staffed. I know the other bosses let you do what you like, but I'm putting my foot down, girl. You'd better be here in 45, or you're fired. I say to her, uh, remember the last time I worked with you? She says, yeah. Over a week ago, boo. You can't keep playing these games, girl. This stuff isn't cute. Your boyfriend hasn't been here either, so you can calm down now. I say to her, yeah, no, I told you that since you couldn't accommodate my one request, I would quit. She then says to me, so are you coming in or not? Because if you're not, I'm writing you up, and I'll make sure you never work anywhere again. I say to her, Mary, I do not work for you. I quit a long time ago. What don't you understand? Clearly she's not listening because she tells me, fine, you have 30 minutes. Now obviously I didn't go in, but I did block Mary's number, and I had the time of my life greeting random co-workers that she would send to my house to try and get them to bring me into work. She was nuts. My co-workers loved getting paid to walk 45 minutes to my house and chill. The ex was taken care of legally, and I've since moved, but memories of that conversation always make me laugh. Again, another supervisor that needs to be fired, guys. Like, sending employees to someone's house to harass them is probably grounds for immediate termination. No questions asked. I'm glad OP is safe now and away from all that BS. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash entitled people episode, where a psycho Karen prevents paramedics from saving her dad's life because apparently she wants his money. It's such a crazy story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.